So yesterday I was scrolling through my phone and I came upon this entire cache of video clips that I had taken last May. And they were all of containers that we had planted up for customers. And before they left our care, I thought, you know what, I wanna get these on video just because I know next winter I'm gonna to wanna to remember these because there's some really good ones in there. And when we're planning out our combinations, it's really easy to forget some of the more unique combinations or you know, we kind of default to some of the same old, same old. So I wanted to remember all these. And as I was looking at them, I thought, you know what, I bet there's people on YouTube who would get a lot of inspiration from seeing these as well. So let me show you exactly what I found. This first one is a beauty and it all starts with that red petunia. That is the Sanguna Merlot absolutely beautiful dark rich color on this one and I will warn you this petunia is particularly fond of the fertilizer it definitely wants its fertilizer every week to keep flowering it is absolutely stunning one of my favorites for the dark reds we have that planted with a superbina peachy keen verbena and a cabaret deep yellow calabrocoa and there would be two verbena two calabrocoa and one petunia in a 14 inch basket and that one just fills out really nice looks great this next one had two plants that were new last year supertunia mini vista yellow petunia along with the superbena imperial blue verbena i think they've changed the name that one of that one to superbena cobalt and those grew so well we put two of each plant in those hanging baskets I'd say you could get away with one of the petunias and do two of the verbena and it would mix in just fine as well. So if you want to kind of save on plants, you can do that. If you notice that verbena in the foreground is kind of stretching forward, part of the reason for that is because that was the shadier side. We hadn't rotated the pot quite enough, so I wouldn't hesitate to go in and trim that verbena back. It's going to come back full force and fill in. This next one is a beautiful red, white, and blue. There's seven plants in there, and I think this was an 18-inch container. In the center, we put just kind of the old-fashioned spike in there. And the red flower in there is a calliope deep red geranium along with some hot plus i think it's dark blue lobelia and then a cabaret white calabrocoa in there and that particular lobelia is known for having a little bit bigger flowers and being heat tolerant this one was popular in our online pre-orders and what we've got in there is a coleus that's the color blaze albrito amazing nice warm rich colors on that one and then it's planted with the Sweet Caroline, Sweetheart, Jet Black, Sweet Potato Vine. And that's just getting started. Remember, this is the end of May, so we are very early in our season here. That's gonna start trailing very soon, as will that Calabrocoa. That is the Super Bell's Dreamsicle. And that is one of my favorite orange Calabrocoa. A lot of the other ones are a little bit darker, more of a red orange. This one is a really great tangerine color, and it fills out very, very nicely. It gets really big and will start trailing over the pot. This is in a 16 inch pot and we have one coleus and then two each of the other two plants. This next one was either a 15 or a 16 inch pot. The grass you see in there is a Prince Tut. And then around the bottom, we have some red and white Cabaret Calabrocoa. One thing I will note, most of the grasses can handle some amount of drought. These papyrus grasses like the Prince Tut, they can handle a little bit of drought, but they tend to look better if they get consistent water because they do like regular water. The Calabrocoa, meanwhile, do like a little bit less water. So I always hope that that grass is going to suck up any extra so that the Calabrocoa can just enjoy a little dry time between waterings. I love this next one. That tall plant with the white flower on it, that is an Angelonia. It is the Angel Face Super White. That one comes on strong when the temperature goes up. So it's already looking great and it's only gonna get better as the season progresses. We have that with some Calliope Hot Pink Geraniums. And then that bicolor plant you see in there, that is the Superbina Sparkling Rose Verbena. That's another real beauty. And there is a little bit of lophos in there. And lophos is a trailing plant. It doesn't tend to flower until it gets a little warmer, but we've already got arms trailing down and the buds are started. So within a week, I think we probably had some really great flowers on there. I think that one has seven plants in it, one angelonia, and then two geraniums, two verbena, and two lophos. And that's in a 15 inch pot. So that's packed a little bit tight for us. We don't tend to overpack our planters because we find that as the season progresses, they just fill out so nicely when they have that extra space. So seven plants in this 15 inch square planter is kind of where we would normally max out. Other people might put more in, but that's more in line with how we like to plant. This next one has a surefire red begonia in it. That one is just getting started. Those easily get up to two feet tall. 
planted that with some Diamond Frost Euphorbia. The Euphorbia will get a little bit bigger, but it stays nice and compact and mounded like that. Looks kind of like a bed of baby's breath in there, and that stays in flower all summer long. So it's a very easy plant. You don't have to worry about too much, and it just has a nice effect in there. And then along the bottom, we have it planted with some Scivola. Scivola is one of those that once it starts getting warm, it really takes off, and that's going to start cascading down over the edge. It'll start getting a lot of those beautiful purple violet flowers on it. And we have that in a 16 inch pot. There's one begonia, two euphorbia, and two scivola in there. The orange flower you see that is Vermillionaire Kufia, and that is a hummingbird favorite. And we carry a couple different colors of Kufia. This one is one of the more vigorous ones. If it keeps getting water, it will just keep growing and growing. The great thing about Kufia, though, is it stays in flower all season long. And so the hummingbirds are constantly being fed. If you have a couple of these blooming in your yard, you can just stop filling your hummingbird feeders because they're going to go to this first. And we have that planted with some Calibrecoa. Those are the Cabaret Deep Yellow. We had also planted one with the Bees Knees Petunia and the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine. So that was a really nice combination as well. That was in a square planter, and I know there was only one Kufia. I don't know if there was three or four Calibrecoa in there. The other one was in a window box, and it had one Kufia two sweet potato vine, and two petunias. This next one has that beautiful pink exceptional petunia. Strong performing pinks are the easiest to come by in the petunia world, but this one is especially bright and vibrant, and that's planted with a cabaret yellow calibrecoa and a firehouse white verbena. That's in a 14 inch pot, and that one has a total of six plants, so two of each variety in there. This next one's one of our best sellers, and it has that red geranium. I think that's a super moon, and I say that because I look at the leaf, and it has that little dark bullseye on the inside. And that's something people often miss in geraniums, that some geraniums will just have green leaves, and others will have the two-tone leaves, others will have darker leaves. So when you're shopping for geraniums, it's not just the flower color that can be interesting. Those leaves can add a little something as well. That's planted with a lemon appeal black-eyed Susan vine, or also called a Thumbergia. That lemon appeal had probably been trimmed twice at this point, and we like to trim them early on. They'll start climbing up the arms of the hanging basket, and then they'll start trailing down as well. And we do that just so that we get a little more branching on it and a little better coverage. It can be pretty vigorous, so it will, I promise you, it will start going up and it will start going down. It's just an interesting look, and we have that in a 12-inch hanging basket. This one we call our foolproof folly because it is as close to bulletproof as you can get with these plants. It has a surefire rose begonia and a trailing mizu. Both of these plants can do sun or shade. They can handle the heat, they can handle drought, and they both just get better as the summer goes on. Now because the surefires get a decent size, we only have one of them planted in there. If you have a more compact variety or more of the bedding plant types of wax begonia, you're going to want to put more in there. Like you're going to want two, three, maybe even four, just so it fills out really nice. And then we planted that with two trailing mizu, and those will just keep spreading. So you could put more of those in there if you want to fill out faster, but we find two works out really well for us. This last one is another very simple one, has that surefire begonia along with a coleus. Now that coleus is from the Main Street series, gets a really decent size. We have several varieties that get this big with lots of different leaf patterns. So you have loads of choices. Both of these plants will get pretty large, so expect them to get between two and three feet. And then down at the bottom, we have some uh, Lismachia or Creeping Jenny. I think we may have put four in there. That's one that it's just kind of a ground cover. It doesn't have deep roots, so you can put a whole bunch in. Or if you only put two, you can start training it over to the side and it'll fill in pretty quick. It, it's definitely a quick ground cover. This one's very easy. Depending on which coleus and which begonia you choose, this one could be sun or shade. Now that Creeping Jenny doesn't necessarily like the full hot sun, but we find that the plants tend to get big enough that they shade it and they do really well and the Lismachia just cover up the pot and just a really nice effect. That lime color is just absolutely beautiful. I did find several other photos of container combinations that I really like, so I'll probably put together another video with even more inspiration pots for you. So if you want to know when that comes out, make sure you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell. YouTube will let you know when those come out. And we are less than a month away from when we'll be heating up our greenhouses. Plants will start arriving. It is such an exciting time, so I will be taking you along for the ride when all that starts to happen. It'll be a whirlwind when it does, so hopefully I'll be able to keep up with video and all the work in the greenhouse. But I know you guys love seeing green stuff, especially now this time of year, so I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you guys all very soon. Keep watching.